Hello everyone! Uh, this is the second game from the Reykjavik Rapid Tournament of 2004 between Magnus Carlsen and Garry Kasparov. I accidentally said in my previous video that it was an open tournament, but it was actually a specially organized event uh, where players were invited to play here. Garry Kasparov actually uh, received a, a large amount of money just to appear at this event. And I will, I will put a link in the description below uh, where you can check out some original footage from this, this event and also a short interview with Magnus Carlsen. Uh, so here uh, Carlsen opened up with d4, but uh, as you'll see uh, in the video below, uh, Gary Kasparov wasn't at the board. He was uh, late for this game and I think he let Carl left Carlsen wait uh, for like half an hour before he showed up. Uh, so when he finally got to the board, he played d5. Uh, Carlsen uh, played c4 and we have c6, the Slav defense by Kasparov. Knight to f3, knight to f6, knight to c3, e6. Uh, bishop to g5, knight b to d7, uh, e3, and queen to a5. Kasparov goes for the Cambridge Springs variation. Uh, knight b to d2 by Carlsen, uh, bishop to b4, and queen to c2. Uh, Kasparov castles, we have bishop to e2, and the early e5 by Kasparov. Uh, Carlsen castles, he ignores this, and we have e captures on d4, and knight to b3, now attacking the queen and only then preparing to recapture the pawn on d4. Queen to b6, now e captures on d4, we have d captures on c4, bishop captures on c4, and a5. Uh, here Carlsen pushes a4, doesn't allow Kasparov to push that pawn any further, and uh, queen to c7. Uh, we have rook to e1, and here Kasparov played h6. And uh, this, is a, this is a very useful move, but also also an interesting scenario would be maybe something like knight to g4, uh, threatening uh, h2, and after f4, uh, maybe then h6, and after bishop to h4, uh, probably something like knight to b6, kicking this bishop, after bishop to d3, f5, and it's not a bad position for black, uh, but it doesn't really give you any idea how to proceed uh, to develop with black here. So, although although it's a, it's a fine position for black, Kasparov doesn't go for this. He goes for h6 and uh, leaves uh, his uh, options open. And it's a very useful move, as, um, well, you do give the king some breeding space, that's always useful. Uh, as you can see, both of Kasparov's knights are in, uh, one in each other's way. <clears throat> so Kasparov's uh, plan is probably something like knight to b6. Uh, attacking the bishop on c4, and after the bishop retreats, uh, the h7 pawn will no longer be a target. So, a useful move in a lot of ways. Uh, Carlsen plays bishop to h4, uh, and we have bishop to d6 by Kasparov now, uh, uh, pressuring the h2 pawn. Carlsen plays uh, h3, and we have knight to b6 now. And here, uh, you can't, I mean you can, but uh, retreating with the bishop to d3 isn't really a good move here. Because now Kasparov has a knight f to, to d5. And here, this knight is coming to b4 and it's going to be a very powerful piece. Even if you exchange it once, uh, the other knight is then also coming to b4. So, th this would be very good for Kasparov. So, after this knight to b6 by Kasparov, uh, Carlsen played bishop captures on f6. We have knight captures on c4 and now knight to e4. Uh, if uh, pawn captures bishop, then uh, queen captures knight. Uh, and here Kasparov has to untangle somehow. Here he decided to play uh, bishop to h2 check. Uh, king to h1 was played and now knight to d6. And this is a pretty weird move. Uh, after this move, Carlsen definitely gets the upper hand. Probably after something like knight to b6, it's, uh, it's, it's an equal game. Uh, this bishop uh, is still attacked here, this bishop could maybe be trapped here, but uh, Kasparov goes for knight to d6, and it's a very interesting move. So what do you do here? Uh, Carlsen accepts the challenge, and he plays uh, king captures on h2. He's really not afraid of any oh, oh, discovered checks here. Uh, Kasparov plays knight captures on e4, this comes with a discovered check from the queen on c7, and now bishop to e5. And here you don't really have the option of moving the queen. Uh, if you move the queen, then you lose the piece, queen captures on e4. So here Kasparov played knight, knight to d6, and here Carlsen immediately attacks the pin piece. Uh, queen to c5, now with a double attack on the knight on d6. Uh, rook to d8, you have to defend this, uh, and now comes a very nice move, d5 by Carlsen. Uh, the pawn is pinned, you can't capture because your queen would be hanging on c7, 
Uh, here, uh, queen to d7 is played, and now knight to d4, as after the pawn left the d4 square, this is now a, a, a very nice square for this knight, uh, controlling all of these squares. And uh, here, Kasparov played uh, knight to f5. Uh, you can't really capture. If you capture a pawn, uh, this is actually winning for white. For example, if you capture, then Carlsen simply plays uh, queen captures knight. And after queen captures, bishop captures, rook captures, rook to e8, check. Uh, king has to move, and now rook to c1, and you're losing a piece. Uh, well, okay, you don't have to lose a piece, but you ha you have to give up uh, at least the exchange with rook to c6. Uh, after knight captures, pawn captures, rook captures, now you can play bishop to b7, but after rook captures, bishop captures, and rook to a6, uh, it's a completely winning position for white, you're winning the a5 pawn, uh, this is all over. So after knight to d4, uh, Kasparov goes for knight to f5. And here Kaspar uh, Carlsen simply plays uh, d captures on c6, uh, he wins a pawn, uh, b captures on c6, and knight captures on c6. Uh, now Carlsen is attacking the rook on d8, and also uh, he's attacking the pawn on a5 twice with the knight, <coughs> uh, with the knight and with the queen. Rook to e8 by Kasparov, and uh, here Carlsen played rook to d1. Uh, maybe he could have captured with knight captures on a5, uh, but after something like bishop to a6, attacking the rook on f1, uh, rook moves and queen captures on a4, Kasparov would grab the a4 pawn, and it's a very sharp position, uh, Carlsen didn't go for this. Uh, after rook to e8, he first played rook to d1, attacking the queen, and we have uh, a queen to e6. Uh, there was also an interesting move here, for example, bishop to c3 instead of this rook to d1. If you play bishop to c3, uh, it seems like now you have a triple attack on the a5 pawn, but uh, here Kasparov has queen to c7 check. And after king moves, uh, rook to e6, attacking the knight, as the knight is pinned, uh, nothing is defending the queen on c5. So after captures and bishop captures, uh, something like rook to c1, now preparing to capture uh, the pawn, uh, you do have queen to f4. And now if white captures, Kasparov would again capture the a4 pawn. So, definitely, it's hard to say how much of this Carlsen had seen, but uh, he decides to go for rook to d1. Uh, queen to e6 by Kasparov, and uh, here Carlsen played rook f to e1. And instead of this rook f to e1, uh, white is still better here, but there was, a, there was a very interesting move in this position. And uh, I don't want you to find this move, as it's, uh, I don't know, it's not a very easy move to find. The move is bishop to c7. And uh, the reason this is good because uh, in the previous variation I've shown you, you can attack the a5 pawn uh, if you played bishop to c3. But now that the queen had moved uh, to e6, now you can play bishop to c7. And now the queen no longer has the option of harassing the king on this diagonal. So now you do have a triple attack on the a5 pawn. And after something like uh, queen to f6, uh, attacking the b2 pawn, you simply push it to defend it to b3. And after bishop to e6, uh, okay, you do attack the b3 pawn, uh, you have this knight captures on a5, simply grabbing the pawn and protecting the b3 pawn. <clears throat> and uh, this is a very uh, interesting position that uh, could have come up on the board, uh, where Carlsen is uh, up two pass pawns, this a pawn and the b pawn, uh, both are pass pawns and the both pawns are, uh, well, there is no way for Kasparov to actually capture them. Uh, so this is uh, the position I wanted you to really enjoy and uh, maybe to study. Uh, how would you approach this position with white and could you could you find a plan how to convert uh, the extra two passed pawns into a win? As you do have to take a couple of moves into account, for example, rook e to c8 uh, pinning this bishop and could white, could white uh, withstand this and, uh, uh, you know, emerge victorious. So this is the position I just wanted you to see, uh, but after queen to e6, Carlsen didn't play this bishop to c7 move, he played rook f to e1, kind of threatening some discoveries after this bishop moves. Uh, bishop to b7, now there are no discoveries uh, because queen captures on c6 is a, is a threat. Uh, knight to d4 by Carlsen attacking the queen, and knight captures, queen captures, and now queen to g6. Uh, protecting the g7 pawn, also threatening checkmate on g2, and uh, here uh, in this position, as you will see if you check out the original footage, uh, Carlsen had about uh, 3 minutes on the clock and Kasparov had almost 12 minutes on the clock. 
So here Colston does have the option of pushing f3 or maybe defending with bishop to g3. Uh, but uh, let's say this is played. Uh, rook captures, rook captures and after queen to c6 uh, threatening checkmate again. Uh, f3 would have to be played and now queen to d5. Uh, Kasparov can easily offer a, a, a trade of queens. Uh, Carlsen is still up a pawn, but uh, there are still opposite colored bishops on the board, but there there are still rooks on the board, so it's not not uh, all that immediately drawish. So maybe maybe he could have gone for this, but uh, with three minutes on the clock it would be very hard to find uh, any kind of winning plan for white here. So after G, uh, queen to g6, Carlsen played queen to g4, defending checkmate and offering a trade of queens. But now, when the queens come off the board, queen captures, h captures, uh, and bishop to c6, going after the a4 pawn. Uh, b3 defending, now f6, uh, bishop back to c3. Uh, rook captures, rook captures, and bishop to d5, attacking the b3 pawn. It's very clear that uh, Kostin's extra pawn will not, will not matter that much in this game. Uh, rook to b1 defending, uh, we have king to f7, now uh, king to g3. Both players improving the position of their kings. Uh, rook to b8, uh, now attacking the b3 pawn. Uh, Carlsen pushes b4, uh, a captures, bishop captures. As if rook captures, uh, then there will only be opposite color bishops on the board. This is a completely drawn endgame. So Carlsen still tries to win this game, even with uh, so little time on the clock, and uh, uh, even though he's playing against Gary Kasparov. He plays bishop captures on b4. Uh, bishop to bishop to c4, now a5, uh, bishop to a6, now blocking the passed pawn on a light square. Really not a lot Carlsen can do here. Uh, f3, uh, king g6, now king f4, uh, h5, g captures, king captures, rook to h1, check. Uh, king g6, bishop to c5, uh, rook to b2, uh, king to g3, rook to, rook to a2, now attacking the pawn. Uh, bishop back to b6, king to f7. Rook to c1, uh, g5, now Carlsen checks on c7, king to g6, and after uh, rook to c6 check, uh, Kasparov played uh, bishop to f1, and now there is no way for you to defend the, g, the g2 pawn without moving the bishop, and uh, after you move the bishop you have to give up the a5 pawn. So here bishop uh, to f2 was played by Carlsen, as there was no other move that defends the g2 pawn, and Kasparov simply captured uh, rook captures, uh, he didn't capture the rook in this position, they agreed to a draw. Uh, but after this uh, pawn is captured, it's uh, both players have a rook, two pawns and uh, an opposite colored bishop, so this is this is a dead draw. So yeah, uh, that's the game. Uh, uh, Carlsen managed to drew, uh, draw against uh, Gary Kasparov, so out of the three games they played, uh, Kasparov has two wins and one game was drawn. So not not a bad uh, not a bad deal for a 13 year old uh, Carlson. So that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it, and I really do hope you will uh, try and figure out a winning plan in that position where Carlson could have been up two pawns. But uh, you know it's it's very hard to figure out a plan there. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Zubin uh, Barucha and David Koeller for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Both of them will now be. Uh, uh, Carlsen vs. Kasparov from Reykjavik 2004. Uh, thank you all for watching and I will see you soon.